Hello everyone and welcome to Life Begins at 20. My name is Mark and today we have episode 3 of MTG Cubed. In this episode we're going to be talking about what cards I have in my cube, starting with the colour white. I only started playing properly from Shadows Over Innistrad onwards, so there are going to be a lot of cards in there which are newer cards. So if you have any suggestions for me of older cards that may well improve the gameplay of my cube, please put them in the comments section below as they'll really help. If you enjoy the video, please hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. In my cube in the colour white, there are two planeswalkers, although you may see the third one later on for the Origins Gideon. So to start off with, we've got Gideon, ally of Zendikar. I really do like this planeswalker, I mean, he could protect himself, you can create lots of tokens, and you can buff up all the creatures you have. So with my cube in white, I've decided to try and produce either a plus one plus one counter strategy or lots and lots of creatures. So he's great for either flooding the board with lots of token creatures or even just buffing up a load of creatures you have yourself. Really do like this planeswalker, it's very strong. And then the other also include for white would be Elspeth here. I mean, again, her plus one, she's gonna give her loads of little bodies to protect herself with. You can come in and minus three her straight away to destroy a huge creature and threat they have, which is fantastic. Or her minus seven, to be perfectly honest, will end up winning most games. Just because if you're playing lots of creatures, giving them more plus two, plus two and flying, or just getting straight through, your opponent's not going to have that many ways of dealing with that great card. So starting with the one drops, we've got Kithian, Hero of Atcross here. I mean, yes, he will turn into a Planeswalker once the ability procs. But, to be perfectly honest, even just by itself, if he doesn't manage to flip over, he's still a pretty good card. So, for one, you're getting a 2-1 creature, which is what I was aiming for with most of my 1-drops here in white. Plus, the fact that you can pay 2 in a white to gain Indestructible to the end of turn as a little way of protecting him is fantastic. You get to flip him over into this Planeswalker side. I mean, every single one of my... Um, Colours has got has made sure they've got at least the Origins Planeswalker in there to make it a little bit fairer. Um, so for plus two, you can get one of their opponent's creatures to come and attack him, which is great, especially if they didn't really want to attack with something. It's plus one until the next turn, target creature gains indestructible and untap it, which is great. You've then managed to either give yourself a blocker or you can swing in making sure that you can deal some damage to your opponent or even something with death touch you can swing in they can either block it or choose not to but it's indestructible so yours won't disappear or you can just make him another body to swing in for that's indestructible and he's great next up we've got mother of runes this is probably one of the best one drops that i can think of in my cube uh, I mean, yes, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1, but you can tap it to target which you control against protection from another colour until the end of turn. So every single turn, unless she's dealt with, one of your creatures is going to be protected at all times. Really do like this card. So from Shadows of Instrad, again, one of the newer cards that I've got in the set. Uh, we've got Town Gossip Monger. I like this purely down to the fact that I've got a human theme for most of the colour cards in the uh, white category here. So the fact that, yes, you might be able to get a lot of creatures out, and for one, if you get another creature out, you can tap it, you're going to get a 2-3. And I thought a nice 2-3 for one is pretty decent. Another one of my favourite cards for one drops here is Doom Traveller. He's just good value. So you've got yourself a 1-1 creature, you can block with it, and then get yourself a 1-1 Flying Spirit. I mean, that's great. I'd like to have cards with just cards that can do more than one thing or add a little bit extra than just being vanilla. Speaking of just a standard 2 1 for 1, Elite Vanguard, it's a great card. Thraben Inspector, another one of my favourite cards from Shadows of Innistrad as a 1 drop. He just gives you a little bit more. Yeah, he's a 1 2, so he can get rid of 1 1. Um, attacking creatures not a problem and still stay alive but the investigate side of things where you can get yourself an artifact which may boost other cards and other sets or you've just got something that you can pay to to get yourself a draw a card very useful uh, sticking with the human theme here I've picked champion of the parish just because there are a fair few humans within uh, my white set for sure and a lot of other colors as well so just being able to give him something that can grow over time if you can get this out on turn one, he's just going to get quite big very quickly, and that's that's very useful. 
Uh, for other one drops, it's Toppelgeist. I like this card just because it has a little bit extra to it. Delirium wouldn't be too difficult to be able to proc within the cube anyway. So for one, you get a flying 1-1. One, one. Quite happy to pay that. And you get to tap a target creature down. So if he comes out on, say, turn 2 or turn 3, you might be able to swing in for some extra damage. But the Delirium effect here meaning that four or more card types in your graveyard, you get to type the target creature that player controls every single turn. That's just great. And new entry in here is Toolcraft Exemplar from Kaladesh. I liked him because if you can get Thraben Inspector out, for example, or any of the other artifacts, I mean, there's a lot of mana rocks in the sets as well. So being able to at least get him being a plus two, plus one when he, atta uh, when he attacks is great. And... Three or more artifacts, to be perfectly honest, may not be that difficult to achieve with this with this card anyway. Giving him first strike as well, so realistically, on your turn attacking a three to a first strike for one cost is great. Moving on to the two drops now, uh, we've got ourselves imposing sovereign. So for one and a white, it's a two one, which isn't fantastic. But to be perfectly honest, creatures your opponents control into the battlefield tapped. Really nice. I mean, I wanted to be able to have controlling feet features in white because. That's what it's great for, and um, he is fantastic. He's such an uh, like a nuisance for other players, and they really don't like playing against him. Next, we've got Consul's Lieutenant. It's a really nice card. The double white may be a little bit of a problem to start off with early in the game, but you know, a two-one with first strike and renown, and when he becomes renowned, whenever he attacks, all of your other creatures get plus one plus one to the end of turn as well. He's just a really really solid card, and I like that. Uh, one of the ones I got out of the dual deck that came out with Shadows Over Innistrad. So for one and a white, a 2-2, two, two, it's fine. And you get to tap it to exile target creature card from a graveyard. This is really useful because there are a lot of cards within the set, especially when you're going into black, that want to try and put a load of cards into their graveyard and then bring them back. This just enables you to you know stop them doing that and get rid of something that they might prove valuable later on. Good card there. War Priest of Thune, so again, 2 cost 2-2 two, two is great, but it gets to destroy an enchantment when it enters the battlefield. Really, really useful. Again, you might be able to get Flicker Effect out as well to be able to bring him back and keep doing that. Just useful card. Another one on my 2 drops here, so for a 2 you get a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you gain life, you may pay a white and give a plus 1, plus 1 counter on a target creature. I wanted to make sure there were ways to be able to get plus 1, plus 1 counters on things. So this was a really good card for that. Next up, we've got Core Skyfisher. So for one and a white, you get a flying 2-3. Yes, it has a bounce effect. You have to return a target permanent you control. This could be a land. This could be anything. So if you, as long as you're building your um, deck quite low, I'd quite happily have uh, get this coming out. It's a great card. Sticking with the human theme again, so for one and a white you get a 1-1, one, one. so when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each other human you control. Again, fairly useful trying to get those plus one, plus one counters out, but also the best thing with him is if another human enters the battlefield, put counter on him. There's going to be lots of ways of getting humans out, either via tokens as well, so he could get quite big very quickly. Next up we've got Anafenza, so for... Two whites, you get a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield and you control, bolster one, which is great. Again, it's another way of getting plus one, plus one counters out onto creatures. Really useful. Again, with the human theme here, so we got a 2-2 two, two for two. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four or more creatures, you get to transform it. Again, I really do like the back end of this card. So it just means the power and toughness is how many creatures you've got and it just means you're going to keep getting more tokens on your end step you can just make yourself a massive board presence and try and wipe them away that way really nice next card we've got here again it's a human with relic seeker so for two is a two two but when it becomes renowned search your library for an equipment card reveal it and put it into your hand there are a fair few equipment I need to work on actually putting a bit more in so this card may or may not stay in the cube that long but it's, it can be quite useful for you. Good card there. Precinct Captain. Uh, again, we've got another 2-2 two, two for 2, but this has got First Strike, which gives him a little bit of a plus. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, you get to put a 1-1 one, one token onto the battlefield. You can swing in earlier on. You can give yourself a nice board presence there to really, really take control. Nice little card. Uh, another one of our humans, so two pound free blade, a two two with vigilance for two. I do like that, and the renowned one means that you get himself a plus one plus one counter if it deals damage. Just useful. 
Lone Rider, again, this card may or may not stay in my cube just because there isn't a huge amount of ways to be able to get life, um, gain life with it that might change later on as I develop it, but I really do like this card. This did some really good work for me back in pre-release and I just I, I really enjoy it. So again, human theme, one, one, first strike lifelink. Gain three or more life, you get to transform it. And it just becomes a four, four, first strike trample and lifelink. I mean, that'll do some serious work for you in the games. Great card. And the last of our two drops here is Selfless Spirit. Flying to one. But this is the fact that you can just sacrifice it and all your creatures going indestructible. It's really, really useful card. Next up, we're moving to our three drops here. So Recruiter of the Guard. I really do like this card. One of the one of the great cards that came from Conspiracy 2. Yeah, it's a three cost one one, but it enters the battlefield. You can search your library for a creature card with toughness two or less, reveal it and put it into your hand. That's really, really useful to have because there are a lot of cards which are quite powerful that have lower toughness anyway so you could get yourself something really useful like thalia for example which is in this de in the uh, two drop category as well which will make a big difference for you great card sticking with our plus one plus one counter um strategy going on with this abzan falconer each creature you've got with the plus one plus one counter has flying that's that's really useful being able to give something ev evasion plus you've got outlast as well, which means you can put a plus one plus one counter on something else and give it flying straight away. Really do like that card. One of the cards come from uh, Commander 2016 here. So again, sticking with the plus one plus one counter strategy, I want to just see how it works. It may not stay in the cube, but it was it might have been a good idea at the time. So for three, you've got a one four. Beginning of your upkeep, each player may put two plus one plus one counters on a creature he or she controls. If your opponent does, they can't attack. You are a planeswalker. I mean. You're going to get yourself bigger. There are lots of ways of getting plus one plus one counters to benefit you within the cube as well. And it'll just stop your opponent attacking for a turn if they choose to. If they don't and they want to attack you, then you're getting the benefits of this. I do quite like that. And here we have Thalia. So for two and a white, we've got a three two first strike. Creatures and non basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. That's huge for a cube because there are a lot of non basic lands within the. Uh, within the cube itself so this is a really really useful card I really do like Thalia next we've got and again another reprint from uh, Commander 2016 that I wanted to add in so we've got Mentor of the Meek 2 and a white it's a 2-2 two, two. whenever another creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control pay 1 and draw a card there's lots and lots of cheap creatures you, can, you might be able to draw yourself a lot of cards here useful card there Another one of the reprints, but to be honest, this is a really good card anyway in Mirror Entity. So for two and a white, we've got a 1-1 one, one changeling. You can pay X until the end of the turn. Creatures you control of base power and toughness XS and gain XX and gain all creature types. Really useful. You could just have loads of little tiny creatures, play this card, smash in for loads of damage that your opponent's not expecting. Love that card. One of my favourite cards now from Kaladesh, an aerial responder. I mean, it's Flying Dwarf. I don't really need to say more than that, but to be perfectly honest, it's a slightly worse Vampire Nighthawk, but I still love it. A 2-3 Flying Vigilance Lifelink for 3, I'm more than happy to be paying that. Fairgrounds Warden's next, so for 2 and a white, it's a 1-3, enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until he leaves. It's just, it's a better Banisher Priest in my opinion, only because... The mana cost means that people trying to splash for white are able to get this off a lot easier than one and two white that was Banisher Priest. Then we've got Avon Rich, uh, Rift Watcher, so it's a 2 3 flyer for three with vanishing. Yep, it means you're only going to have it for a, certain, like, a limited period of time and you gain two life when it enters and leaves the battlefield. Useful card, I, I do like that. And the last of our. Uh, two drops here, so for one and two white, you've got a flying 3-3, three, three. ends the battlefield, return a permanent you control to its owner's hand. I don't mind that so much, it could be a land and you're happy with th your next three drop, you're not going to get too far behind, or it could just be a little creature that you want to bring back, like the Avon Rift Watcher there, and then you can pay out again. Just a really useful card. Okay, on to our four drops now, so we've got Windborne Muse here, so for three and a white, we've got a flying 2-2. Two, two. And I just like the taxing ability on it. So creatures can't attack you unless they control a pace 2 for each creature. Really useful. Again, it's another one of the Commander 2016 uh, reprints there, but I, need to, I wanted to put that in. 
A newer card from Commander 2016 is Selfless Squire. So for three and a white, you've got a 1-1 one, one with Flash. Enter Battlefield, prevent all damage, and get that many plus one, plus one counters on him. It's useful for plus one, plus one counters, plus the fog effect is great. And depending on how many creatures your opponent swings in for, which could be quite a lot in cube, you're going to maybe get yourself a really big creature here as well. I do like that. Next, we've got Calciderm. So... So for four, you've got a five-five with shroud and vanishing four. Again, I don't mind that too much, to be perfectly honest. Just having a five-five for four power is quite it's just nice. And last of our uh, four drops is Archangel of Tides. I wait until Origins is uh, rotated out of standard to buy this because I wanted it. I just didn't want to pay the same amount of cost for it. So for one and three white, which is may may be difficult to uh, cast. So flying three-five. As long as it's untapped creatures, you can't attack your planeswalker unless they pay one. And if it's attacking, they have to pay to block as well. Great. Really do like that. Next up, we've got our five drops. So, again, trying this one out to see if the plus one, plus one counter strategy works well. So, for four and a white, you've got a two, three, enters the battlefield, bolster two. So, again, we're giving ourselves plus one, plus one counters. And whenever a creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter attacks, you get to tap down a creature, you're defending creature. It's great. If you've got loads of creatures now with plus one, plus one counters and they haven't got that big a board presence, you'll be able to tap them all down and potentially swing in for the win there. That's what I see with this card anyway. There are plenty of other cards that are helping with the plus one, plus one counter strategy. So, he may well work out, but there may have been uh, better. Uh, better cards to fit into my five, uh, five drop there. Next, we've got another reprint from 2016. Uh, it's Revelark there. So it's a 4 3 flyer. When it leaves the battlefield, return up to two creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Bring them back to the battlefield is fantastic. They may have things that enter the battlefield triggers as well. It's just really useful. Or you could just pay the evoke cost and have it cast as a spell as well. Really do like the uh, flexibility with that card. Uh, one of the new cards from Kaladesh, Angel of Invention. I, l I love this card. It was in my top 10 um, cards from the set for Cube. So for 3 and 2 white, you've got a 2-1 Flying Vigilance Lifelink creature, which, again, is pretty good. Uh, especially now it's got a plus 1, plus 1 Anthem on it for every other creature you've got. And the Fabricate 2 means you can either give yourself two servos. So if you're going for a wide board presence, it's got the flexibility there, or you could bring it out as a 4-3 Flying Vigilance lifelink, and I'd happily pay 5 for that. Really, really solid card. It might be able to get removed quite quickly, but we'll give it a try and see what happens. And lastly, we've got the Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. I wanted to put in all the Gear Hulks and try them out for each of the colours, just because they look really, really fun to play, and they all give benefits for the certain colours that they're in, so... For 5, a 4-5 of Vigilance, good creature there. When enters the battlefield, each player chooses an artifact creature, enchantment, and a planeswalker from the non opponents he controls and sacrifices the rest. So you're getting yourself a really nice board wipe there for everybody, especially if your opponent is ahead of you and you're then getting this body on top. Really strong, I like that. Next up, we're into our 6 drops. So uh, here we've got Captain of the Watch. So for 4 and 2 white, you've got a 3-3 three, three of Vigilance and it puts 3 one, 1 white soldier tokens onto the battlefield. But other soldier creatures you control have get plus 1, plus 1 and Vigilance. So realistically, with this card when it comes out, you're not actually getting 6-6 six, six worth of power for 6. You're actually getting yourself 9-9s nine, worth of power for 6. I really do like that. There are a lot of other soldiers within um, the set as well, so that's really going to buff it up. And I do like having an Anthem on a card. It's quite useful. Again, one of the cards I've got here that may or may not stay in. I'm not 100% sure, but I quite like the effect it has. So, 4 and 2 whites are 1, 3, and when it enters the battlefield, put a number of plus 1, plus 1 soldier creature tokens on the battlefield equal to your devotion to white. If it works out, again, this is an if it works out, you're going to get yourself a really big board presence. Flicker effect in again means you're going to get a lot more creature, creature tokens as well. It just could be quite useful, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, next up again is sticking with our human theme. Uh, dearly departed here, so for 4 and 2 white you've got a 5-5 five, five fly, which is pretty decent anyway. But as long as it's in the graveyard, every human you control uh, comes into the battlefield with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. If you can get a way of discarding this very, very early in the game in white... Giving every single creature with a plus one plus one counter when it comes in if it's human, which to be fair in white there are a hell of a lot of, very useful. It may 
may not stay in the cube i don't know there probably are some better six drops you'll have to let me know in the comment section below again same with any of the other um drops we've got in here if you can think of anything better that can fit into my cube that isn't too expensive because i don't really want to be spending like 10 15 quid or on the same in dollars for a card please do let me know in the comment section below next up we've got sentinel of the watch uh, sorry sentinel of the eternal watch so i quite like this card for six you get a four six with vigilance it's a nice little defender but it's the fact that at the beginning of combat on your opponent's turn you get to tap down a creature that won't attack you that's really really useful to have so if they've got something that you know they're going to try and swing in with something big you can get nap tapping that down it's not going to happen really useful to have and again it's another one of those creatures which i like the look of it can be quite cool but at the same time may or may not stay in a six drop so it's a four seven for six whenever it blocks it gets plus seven plus seven so the likelihood is uh, it's going to take quite a lot for someone to be able to beat this down and get past it plus for one white you gain protection from the color of your choice until the end of turn as well so it's a nice way of protecting itself i, I just quite like the card and there's only one seven drop within white um again it's one of the cards from eldritch moon not 100 percent sure whether it's going to stay in but it is quite quite useful here so it's a 5-7 flying vigilance which is pretty decent by itself anyway but it's the fact that whenever you cast it you can return an angel or human creature from your graveyard to the battlefield it's the fact that it's coming back to the battlefield which is the huge plus here and there's a lot of humans so a few angels i mean there could be a fair few more um might have to look into that but i, I just think this is a really useful card to have Okay, into the instance, uh, I've made a little change here. This came from the Commander 2016 deck, Swords of the Plowshares. I've been recommended this card previously on the channel anyway, and it's just a really strong card there control for a control deck. It's, it's just great. Don't really need to say too much about it, to be honest. It's just it's just great. Uh, raise the Alarm is next. So for an instant, two one one white soldier tokens. Two one ones for two. I'm quite happy to pay that anyway. It might be quite useful as an instant just to bring in for blocking purposes as well. I mean, it is a foil, but you can't you can't really tell on camera right now. Uh, next up, we've got Immolating Glare, destroy target attacking creature for two. I'm, I'm quite happy with that as a cost. Um, next, we've got Celestial Flare, so sacrifice an attacking or blocking creature. This isn't quite as good. Um, as Immolating Glare only because you don't get to choose which one that is going to be sacrificed but if they're only swinging in with one or they're only blocking uh, with one you're going to find this quite useful Humble is another one I quite like so for one and a white until the end of turn just making them losing all their abilities and has power and toughness not one if you can get this on some of their big creature that's blocking great happy days uh, Blessed Alliance from Eldritch Moon here. I like it because it has a bit of versatility in there. So you can either gain four life, untap two target creatures, or target opponent sacrifices an attacking creature. And you can escalate as well if you wanted to have more than one thing go off. I just like the versatility of it. There may well be better cards. Again, in the comment section, please do let me know if you can think of some really good instance that I've completely missed that I may not know about. Be really handy to know. So please, please do, do, do let me know. Uh, disenchant there, so for one the white, destroying other artifact or enchantment, really useful to have. Uh, sandblast there, so for two and a white is an instant speed, dealing five damage to target attacking or blocking creature. That, to be perfectly honest, may well be better um, than Celestial Flare because there's going to be a lot of times where five damage is probably going to be enough. The times where Celestial Flare is better is if they're attacking with something bigger, so you've got a little bit of a few options here with this useful card but again there may be well be some better things out there uh eerie interludes next i quite like this from uh, shadows over in Estrad, just because you get to exile any number of target creatures you control and return them onto the battlefield in the beginning of the end steps so this either can be your opponent then decides you're going to block in with a lot of creatures and you go oh crap i need to save them this is a good way of doing that or if you have a lot of things with enter the battlefield effects flickering all of them may well be really really useful to do do like that uh, another card come from commander 2016 um is entrapment maneuver so for three and a white target player sacrifice an attacking creature and you get to create x11 soldiers where x is the creature's toughness again 
I'm hope you're going to hope that they're going to be attacking with something big and it's just going to be on its own or a couple of big things that that way that you can get some value out of this it may well come to the point where you don't get a huge amount of value out of it so not necessarily going to be a top priority pick here um, if there is something better you guys can think of please please do let me know in the comments section but I just wanted to give this a try out and see what happens just because tokens might be quite useful to have with everything else that's going on in white and the last one we've got from again so Shadows Over Innistrad three and a white destroy attacking a target creature and you gain three life it's fairly expensive for what it is um, but it's any creature you get to destroy whichever one you want to you want to kill off that's attacking and three life you're not going to complain too much but there may well be better things to have in here so again please do let me know so moving on to the sorceries first up we've got sun lance here so for one at sorcery speed dealing three damage to target non right creature if it goes off geez, bit of, nice cheap bit of removal there quite useful Next we've got Fragmentize, so for one you get to destroy target artifact or enchantment with converted mana cost four or less, which is a fair few of the uh, artifacts and enchantments within the entire cube itself. It's a cheaper version than Disenchant, it loses out on instant speed and it's limited with how high it can do it go, but I think this is a pretty decent card come from uh, Kaladesh there, especially with the amount of vehicles and other bits and pieces that have come from that set, which I'm putting into the cube, so useful card. Declaration in Stone, this is a really really solid card from uh, Shadows Over Innistrad here. Exile target creature and all other creatures control with control with the same name. That in player investigates for each known token creature exiled this way. Yes, you're going to give them a bit of card, potentially card draw if they get a load of uh, clue tokens there, but to be perfectly honest, if they have a load of tokens out, being able to get rid of something or just getting rid of something really big and exiled is just great. Swift Reckoning, I've put in from Origins, so for two, it's destroy target tap creature, but with Spell Mastery, it means that you'd be able to cast it as though it had Flash, so the circumstances being able to have that are fairly, could be fairly regular anyway, and I like the little bit of versatility where it's either going to be a Sorcery Speed or Instant, it just, it just means depending on your deck you may be able to make good use of this. Next up we've got Servo Exhibition, so for one on the white, creating two 1-1 one -one servos. There are use for artifacts within the deck, uh, sorry, within the, the cube anyway, so having something like this is quite useful, and it's just two bodies for two. Gather the Townsfolk, again it's going to be two bodies for two. Um, the best part being, if you get Fateful Hours, if you're five or less life, you get to put five of them out. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case, but... To be perfectly honest, if that circumstance does happen, it's going to be a very useful card for you. Uh, promo card I got there from the Eldritch Moon pre-release. So we've got Collective Effort. So for one and two whites, uh, we have getting an Escalate cost. I like the versatility of these ones. So either destroy target creature with power four or greater, destroy target enchantment, or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you uh, target player controls, which is more going to be yourself anyway. And if all you've got to do is tap two creatures to be able to get all of them for three that's fantastic Kithian's tactics again may or may not stay in my cube I'm not 100% sure there but giving every creature plus two plus one to the end of turn it's all right uh, if you've got a big board presence just smacking it in just playing this before your combat step is going to be pretty good for you anyway just to scare them off but I would prefer this to be at instant speed but if you're two more instance, they also get vigilance as well, so you're not going to lose out if you swing in and they end up having something to stop you. Angelic Purge is another one of the cards I really, really liked in Shadows Over Innistrad. So, sacrifice a permanent and exile target artifact, creature, or enchantment. I just, I just like that card. It's pretty good. I mean, there's going to be you're going to be able to sacrifice a token. You're going to be able to sacrifice. Potentially a clue token if you get Thraven Inspector out, other things like that. It, it just just a nice useful card and Exile is always great. Uh, increasing devotions next. So for three and two white, you get to put five one ones out. Um, if it's cast from the graveyard, you get to put ten out. I mean, it's useful. I like having something that's going to be able to have more use than just the one itself. So I like I, I do like this. I'm giving them all humans as well with the theme that's come out. It's just useful. Wave of Reckoning, I've brought this in from the Commander 2016 uh, decks that I've bought. 
So each creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. It's a nice board wipe. And hopefully you're going to have creatures that have a higher toughness than power. And it might be nice in a little control deck there. There are obviously better versions of this. Um, but I haven't got hold of the cards yet. Again, please put them in the comment section below if I've missed anything. Um, but I'm pretty sure I know which ones I wanted to try and pick up. Fumigates next, so for 3 and 2 white, destroy all creatures and you gain 1 life for each creature destroyed this way. It's a little bit more expensive uh, than the traditional ways of destroying all creatures, but to be perfectly honest, I, if there's enough of them on the board, gaining life is going to be a helpful swing for you anyway. I would quite happily pay 1 extra mana for that. Uh, next we've got Descend Upon the Sinful, so for 4 and 2 white, exiling all creatures. It's I find that a little bit better than... Uh, destroying, which is why I'm happy to have this into my cube. Plus, if you've procked Delirium, putting a 4 4 Angel token is going to be quite useful, but that's a bonus to be perfectly honest. Uh, next, we've got Triplicate Spirits. So, 4 and 2 white, you get to put 3 white spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. The positive here is the Convoke cost, you get to knock it down if you can tap creatures for it. I mean, this card is going to be more useful in a wide board presence. White's going to have loads and loads of little creatures, so being able to get, say, three flying spirits out for two white is going to be really useful. Uh, another one of the Destroy All Creatures cards I've got in here. It's, again, a little bit more expensive, but you get to create an excess colorless horror artifact creature with excess number of creatures destroyed this way. This could potentially be a massive creature, so, again, it's a little bit more expensive than wiping away all the creatures for two and two white but being able to say for example give it 10 10 put it onto the battlefield as well I'm, I'm quite happy with that there may be a better card again you may not you may, if you please just let me know in the comment section if you think there's something better that could be put in here and lastly we've got De uh, decree of justice so for x x two and two white you get to put x four four angels onto the battlefield so if you've got loads of mana fantastic or uh, the cycling cost as well for two and white you can discard a card to draw a card and if you can then pay x to put x11 white soldier tokens on the battlefield as well so draw a lot of time you're not going to necessarily have the mana to be able to really utilize uh, putting angels in here and to be perfectly honest having a card draw and that many 1-1 soldiers out is going to be really useful so again i like the versatility of this card Okay, so uh, on to the enchantments first. Got Sigala's Aid, so for one, casting aura and enchantment spells as though they had flash. And whenever equipment enters the battlefield under control, attach it to another creature you control. I think this is a really useful card to have. There are a few bits of equipment in the cube. There could definitely be more to make more use of this. But there are plenty of enchantments as well, which might be quite useful to have with flash on. So I think it's I think it's a personally is a decent card for, for my cube anyway. Um, again... Like I said beforehand, if you see any cards in here which you think could be improved upon, please do let me know in the comment section below which ones they are and what they can be improved with. Uh, next we've got Griff's Boon. I, I really do like this card. So for one, you get to enchant a creature and give it plus one, plus naught and flying. Nice way of giving evasion there. And for three and a white, you get to return it from the graveyard attached to the target creature and activate this ability anytime you cast a sorcery. So it's quite useful there to have as a way of being able to use it not once. So I, I like that. Nice bit of versatility. Uh, next up we've got a Authority of the Consoles now from Kaladesh. So for one, the creatures your opponent control enter the battlefield tapped, which is really useful to have, and it will end up annoying them a lot, so they will have to deal with this. Uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, gaining life as well, so you get an upside for it as well. Uh, next we've got Blind Obedience, so a reprint here from Commander 2016. Um, for one and a white, you've got artifacts and creatures enter the battlefield tapped instead of just creatures from the same as Authority Consoles. Slightly more expensive, but going to be more useful just because there are a fair few artifacts within my cube. Plus the ability to extort it as well for either white or black. Uh, it, having extort is very, very useful to have. Really nice for a control deck there. Next up we've got Bonds of Faith, so for one and a white, Enchanted Creature gets plus two plus two as long as it's a human, otherwise it can't attack or block. So you've got a nice bit of versatility with this card, 
if you're going to make humans or do a human style deck because there's plenty of them within white this card's going to be great for you but at the same time if your opponent's got something you really don't want to deal with this is a perfect way of being able to stop it from doing anything in the game like the versatility of that Next up we've got Spirit Bonds, again this is potentially a questionable pick in my cube, there probably are better things for this, but for one and a white, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under control, you can pay a white, if you do put a 1-1 Spirit token on with flying onto the battlefield, I quite like that, it's a nice way of getting more creatures out, especially if you say for example put a 3 drop out and you've only got 4 mana, this is a way of getting another one out, it's really useful there. Plus, you get to play one and a white to sacrifice a spirit. Target non-spirit creature goes indestructible to the end of turn. You may have a fair few spirits, which you can protect a lot of your creatures. Or just being able to protect that one creature from being killed off. Really useful. Next up, we've got Stasis Snare. So for one and two white, with it's got Flash. And when it enters the battlefield, exiles a creature your opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Nice bit of removal there. I do like that. Next we've got Spear of Heliod, so I've put in each of the colours the legendary uh, enchantment artefact just to make it fair. Um, again, some of them might be slightly better than others, so we'll have to see as I play more games with this, but so far everybody's been happy with all of them in there, so I'm just going to keep it going for now. Um, so for this one, you're paying 1 and 2 white for a nice anthem where creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. Plus with the upside there of 1 and 2 white to tap it and destroy a target creature that dealt damage to you this turn. It's a pretty useful card there. Bound by Moot Silver is my next card. So um, you get to enchant a creature. It can't attack, block or transform. There are certain cards, especially in my cube, which are able to transform. Again, they've probably they've come from uh, Shadows Over Innistrad or Eldritch Moon, so there is an upside there over Bonds of Faith as a, a piece of uh, as an enchantment. Sorry, that will stop them. Um, but the the plus side for this, which is why it's cost a little bit more, is that you get to sacrifice another permanent and move it if you need to. So you've got a bit of flexibility there. So for example, if you don't want a certain creature to be attacking, this goes on it. But if you say, for example, your opponent then brings out something even bigger that you really don't want to deal with, or you don't have a way of dealing with it, you can move it. I, I think that's really nice to have. And another one of my Anthem cards here. So always watching, one and two white. Non-token creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have Vigilance. I really do like that card. Uh, next we've got Ghostly Prison, so again, another one of the cards within white here that I've got it as taxing people. So creatures can't attack you unless the controller pays two for each creature he or she controls. I really like having the ability to do that, especially nice for a control deck there. Uh, next up we've got Field of Souls, so for two and two white, whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus, uh, sorry, a 1-1 one, one white spirit token with flying onto the battlefield. It's a use, it might be slightly expensive, again, there may be better things out there, but I just like the fact that you could potentially board wipe yourself and your opponent, and you can get yourself a load of spirits. I, I, think, that, I think that's quite handy to have. Faith and Broken's next, so for three and a white, you get to enchant a target creature in control. When it enters the battlefield, exile target creature opponent controls until this leaves the battlefield, and your creature gets plus two, plus two. So... It's a nice way of stopping one of their creatures, keeping it to yourself so they don't end up having anything to do with it, wherein you can still swing in. It's like having Spell Queller built into your own creature. Yes, it means if your creature gets removed, they get their creature back. So it's not quite as good as having Stasis Snare, but I, I still think this is quite a useful enchantment. Again, there may well be better things out there. So... Uh, Next up we've got Sphere of Safety, so another card that I've uh, got from my Commander 2016 decks. Um, for 4 and a white, creatures can't attack you or a Planeswalking control unless their controller pays X for each of those creatures where X is the number of enchantments you control. So there's a fair few enchantments within the cube, especially in all the other colours as well. So this could end up being quite expensive for your opponent to be able to actually attack you. I quite like having them in the control deck. There may be too many of them in my cube. That remains to be seen. I've literally just added them before doing this video. So we'll have to wait and see on that as we do playtesting. Another card I've added from the Commander 2016 decks is Cathar's Crusade. 
Um, so whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, put a plus one plus one counter on it for each creature you control. So I wanted to make sure that the plus one plus one strategy was actually available in my cube because it wasn't really that well dealt with beforehand. So I just think having this may well be something really, really nice to have and people will end up picking it. So well, again, we'll have to wait and see if whether it does a good job or not. And the last enchantment we've got here is Dictate of Heliod. So again, it's a nice anthem here, but especially with Flash. So for five, all creatures you control get plus two, plus two. It's, it's a nice combat trick to have, especially with Flash for all of your creatures doing any blocking or attacking. Plus, plus two, plus two. Across the board is great. Really do like that. So there we have all the cards I have in my cube for white. In the next episode, we're going to be going over the blue cards. So if you have any suggestions, please do put them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button as I bring out content every Tuesday and Friday. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.